Hey, this is Malcolm341. In this video, we're going to look at some Maya modeling tricks and secrets. So today we're going to look at paint selection and the hotkey for it, the symmetry tool and how to actually make it work, and how to colorize UV shells. So let's get into it. Okay, so first up, we've got the paint selection um, trick or secret hotkey or whatever. Um, so basically what you do um, you can right click and you can go into face mode and sure you can select stuff like this and like this and like this and like this and it kind of takes forever or you can do this but then you've got to worry about that and you could do it one at a time one two three four five six seven eight whatever that's all like super slow uh, when you start to get into more uh, high poly shapes um, so the trick is you go into face mode and then you hold tab on the keyboard and when you're holding tab on the keyboard, you'll see the cursor will change to this little plus thingy here. And that's the paint selection tool. And so now all you do while you're holding tab is you just click and drag. And you can actually just drag out and paint the selection in a matter of seconds instead of having to like go through and click every single one. And then you just release the mouse and boom, there you go. You've got your selection. And at any time, you can go back into regular select mode. So I'm in regular select mode here, doing double click, doing single click stuff here. And then when I hold tab, then it becomes the painter mode, which is super useful. And there is nothing more satisfying than holding tab and selecting the top of a cylinder, probably because it used to be so painful to do this. Like in the olden times, in the dark ages, you would have to do this to basically get that selection, or you'd have to go into the top-down camera and then like remove some selection there or whatever. If you want to remove from the selection, so you hold tab to uh, make a selection, and then you release the left mouse button to accept it. If you want to remove from selection, you actually just keep holding tab, and you just paint back over the same selection, and then it will remove it. So if you want to get rid of it, it's a little bit different workflow than the standard Maya selection, which would be holding control or holding shift to uh, minus it from the selection. Okay, next up is the symmetry tool. So you can get to the symmetry tool from a bunch of places. You can get to it from right here. This is probably like a pretty handy one. You can also double click it and into the move tool, and it'll also be in the symmetry settings here. You can turn on all the different symmetry modes there. And then finally, probably the best or maybe the easiest way to get to it is if you hold down the W key and then hold down the left mouse button at the same time, it'll bring up this menu and then you can just go up and you can just turn it on here. So here you can choose your different modes and you can enable it and disable it. So this is probably good for turning it on and off. And then if you need the different specific settings, it's probably best to get to it from here because you can access these, these things here, uh, kind of whatever you prefer. So what the symmetry tool does is it makes the basically the other half of the object that you have selected, it kind of mirrors your selection and whatever you do to the components on the other side. So here, I'm just going to select this component here and you can see nothing's happening over there. So I'm going to go up to symmetry and I'm going to say I want world space along Z. And you can see as soon as I turn that on, if I move the thing on the left side, it moves it on the right and so on and so forth. So you can see without having to mirror and instance the object into another half, you can just do a couple like little tweaks right here. So um, this can be handy uh, in certain situations. I still usually use uh, the mirroring stuff and I'll actually make an instance because then you can kind of have a little bit more control there. What is really cool about the symmetry tools that also supports um, all the modeling stuff you do. So you can see if I do a cut here, it mirrors it along to the other side there. If I do a cut there, it's going to um, symmetrize it across the, the cutting plane there and add it onto the other side. Now, let me show you where the symmetry tool um, gets all fucked up and breaks down. So we're using symmetry world Z. So that means that anything I do on this side of it is going to affect it um, on the other side there. So basically, that works great um, when your object is in world space at zero and in the origin. So right now, my center edge just happens to be aligned with the center of the world. So this is cool. I can do this. I can move this guy around. But watch what happens when I move my object to the side a little bit. So let's say I'm doing some modeling over here, for example. So I go in and I select my edge here, and nothing happens. I can't uh, have the symmetry. It just like immediately fails. 
And that's because I've moved my object away from uh, the world space. So what you can do is you can go and let's go into object space. So let's go object along Z and you'll see, okay, cool, right on. Like I got my thing back. It's all working again. It's great. Everything's fantastic again. Now, the problem with the object space one is here's my translate away from Y or whatever. Let's say I go and I go up to modify and I say freeze transformations. Okay, cool. Let's do some more symmetry modeling. Oh, shit. Wait, I can't because it's no longer symmetrical because I don't have any object space transform away from the world. So what do I do now? This tool totally sucks. So to get around this, there's, a, there's another version of the symmetry thing, which is called topology. And that's the best one. That's the one you're going to want to use all the time because it works no matter where your object is in the world. And so how that works is you go to symmetry and you go down to topology. And then what it does is it switches to edge mode. And I found this really confusing when I first tried to learn this tool is that you need to then not actually start doing stuff. Don't start modeling. You need to select the middle edge, the center edge, which is going to act as the symmetry plane. So we're going to select the center of the model. This edge will define. And now then I can go into vert mode. And then there you go. See, I can like do the symmetry stuff again. It's all good. Everything's working fine now. So basically, the trick to it that I found is that like, what can often confuse people is they'll go to topology mode, and then they'll like, try to start modeling, and nothing will happen. They'll be like, what the fuck? Ah, this tool's the worst. Ah, I don't understand. It's broken. Um, and that's exactly what I did. I actually posted on the Maya forum, and I was like, I think the symmetry tool does not work at all in any capacity. Uh, and then later, I learned that it's just kind of not intuitive that you have to click the middle edge before you start using the tool. So like I mentioned before, probably the best way to do it so you don't even have to go up here is hold uh, W key and the hold left click. And then you can just go symmetry on, symmetry off. So you can go symmetry on and then start working away. There you go, whatever, select your faces, edges, whatever you want to do here. Uh, what's also really neat is you can do, well, like I mentioned, you can do all types of um, modeling operations. So let's get the symmetry on here. And then you could actually go into the target weld tool, and it will be symmetrical as well. So this is pretty cool. You can weld the vert over here, and it'll weld the vert over there. So sometimes when you're changing a model, optimizing it, or uh, even just doing modeling stuff, it's kind of pretty powerful to be able to symmetrize like all types of weird workflows like that. Another neat trick of the tool is that it actually works on um, non-symmetrical models. So if I were to target weld that, so we've got a square over here and a try over here. And then if I enter symmetry again, if I grab this vert, even though this side of the model is not symmetrical, it's still going to be symmetrical for that vert. So it does its best to try and find uh, matching topology on the other side. And that's why you have to define the thing in the center or whatever. So that's pretty cool. So you can move that one. It doesn't move anything over here because there isn't anything. But if you move the one beside it, it becomes symmetrical. OK, and then finally, we have the uh, colorized UV shells, uh, which is uh, super, super handy, actually. So um, basically here, I'm just going to turn on the grid by clicking here. I'm going to turn on the image so we can use the darkening slider. And then I'm going to click this button here to colorize the shells to just make them a different color than the background image. I just have some different UV shells here. And you can use the show UV border edge to kind of see them. But it can be really handy just in the 3D viewport while you're doing UV mapping to actually colorize each shell differently. So you can kind of get an idea of the UV layout. And that is done by going to this button here. That's the regular button to just make it blue or whatever. And so if you um, right click this button, it will colorize the UV shells. So you'll see each shell changes to be a different color here. So if you left click it, you'll get the blue stuff. If you click over here, you just get the wireframe. So if you left click, blue, right click, colored UV shells. And if you actually hover over these, you'll see it'll actually tell you all these weird secret kind of button combinations. There's like a shift um, left click and some other weird stuff in there. So you can explore that a bit further. So basically, you right click it. And then any time that a new UV shell is created, it assigns a color to it. So if we find, let's say, the orange shell there, and we just select some faces, hold shift, right click, and say create new shell, you'll see as I created it, it automatically uh, assigned it a new color. So you can really quickly 
kind of see what your UV mapping is doing. I find this really useful when I'm UV mapping just so it can kind of tell what uh, shells are sewn together and which ones aren't. Um, so yeah, check it out. It's pretty cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. Without viewers like you, this channel would not be possible. If you like this video, please purchase something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad-free. See you next time. Have an outstanding day.